So in this problem, we're told to consider the circuit in this figure. And we're going to assume that V sub zero is equal to three volts. And so what we're going to be solving for is the total power developed in the circuit. So in order to do this problem, the first thing we're going to want to do is solve for basically every single variable in this circuit. And so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing that they tell us is that V sub zero is three volts. And so V sub zero right here is labeled. So that means we know the voltage across this is three volts. And so we know that three is going to be equal to 10 VA because this is also the voltage across it. They just labeled it two different ways. So essentially, uh, right, so three is going to be equal to 10 VA since they're both the voltage. So we can solve for VA. So it's going to be three divided by 10, which is just 0.3. So 0.3 volts. And so now what we have is the voltage across here. So we have this voltage and we have this voltage. Now, how can we solve for VG? So in order to solve for VG, we're going to use one of the rules uh, that you're going to learn, which is Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law, which basically allows us to sum up the voltage in a loop and we can solve for one of the missing variables. So what we're going to do is do that voltage law across, uh, in this loop. So this loop that I'm drawing right here. So basically, we just sum up the voltage of each of the components. So let's go ahead and start. And so I'm going to be using the pass the sign convention. So when we enter a side, that's going to be the sign we use. So since this is negative, we're going to use negative. So we have minus VG, right, adding this one. This one's going to be plus VA, right? Keep in mind, we're adding the voltages. And since we're, at, we're going in the plus side, we add VA. And then this is going to be going around, and then we enter the minus sign. So minus uh, V sub 0. And so all, it all should add to 0. So we have minus VG equals VA, which we found was 0.3. And then we know that this is 3. Sorry about this. Plus 0.3 minus 3 equals 0. So this is going to be minus VG. And then this is going to be minus 2.7 equals 0. So let me go ahead and zoom out real quick. Let me get rid of this too. So there we go. And then minus VG is going to be equal to 2.7. So therefore, VG equals 2.7. And so keep in mind, this is volts. So now we have the voltage across here. Let's go ahead and write that in. And keep in mind, it's a negative number. So that, or yeah, it's a negative number. Sorry, I forgot to put it there. So minus 2.7 volts uh, right here. So minus 2.7 volts. Basically, the negative sign is just telling us the polarity is incorrect. But uh, we're just going to leave it like this. So now that we have that, I actually went ahead and labeled this already. But you can actually pick uh, the polarity of this to be any direction. I'm just choosing it to be this way. And it's going to turn out whether it's positive or negative. It'll all work out. Uh, just choose whatever one you want. I'm choosing it this way. And so if we want to so uh, find the power to the power yeah, power developed. We basically need to find the voltage across every source. So we're going to label this Vx is what I'm going to call it. And so we need to solve for Vx if we want to be able to solve this. So how can we find Vx? So just like we did last time, or on the last loop, we're going to do uh, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law again. So doing that, we have, and he might have labeled this positive, and we're going to do it this way. So it's going to start with positive Vx. So let's go ahead and do that. We have Vx. And then right here, we have 20 volts. And so it's positive, so plus 20. And then keep going around. We have entering the negative side, so it's minus VA. So VA is uh, right here, 0.3, so minus 0.3. And then we're going to be entering the positive side, but keep in mind it's a negative number. So we're adding minus 2.7. So um, yeah, minus 2.7. So VX equals. And keep in mind, this is all equal to zero. When you sum it up, you uh, equal to zero. So we have 20 minus 0.3 minus 2.7, and then switch it to the other side. So minus 17 volts. So uh, yeah, if you did it the other way, you would just get a positive 17. So that's essentially what that means. So let's just write minus 17 volts here. And so now that we have everything on the circuit labeled, it's going to be pretty easy to solve for it. So keep in mind, we're going to be finding power developed. So we're going to be dealing with power. So keep in mind the formula for that. So for this one, since we're just dealing with um, current and voltage, it's P equals IV. And so when I look at this problem, what I'm recognizing now is that we need to determine, well, which sources are developing, which are, uh, right? So which, which sources are developing power, which are absorbing power. So let's go ahead and do that because if we can just recognize the ones that aren't developing, we don't have to add those into it. So which ones are doing which? So the way we do that is by looking at the passive sign convention, which basically tells us if the power is going to be negative, right? assuming we're using that convention, then it's going to be uh, developing. 
and if it's positive, it's going to be absorbing. So essentially, that the way that works is if you don't know the passive sign convention, it's P equals IV. And so whenever you enter the positive side, so in this case, if the current's going this way, if uh, we enter the positive, it's going to be a positive value of power, which means it's uh, absorbing. And if it enters a negative side, for example, if we were going like this, it would be developing. So which ones are doing which? So let's start with this one right here. So I know that the current's traveling this way across this one, and it's going to be entering the positive side. So positive side tells me we're going to be using the positive formula. So P equals IV, but keep in mind we have a negative voltage. So when we plug in the negative voltage and then multiply it by a positive current, we're getting a negative value. And then uh, negative value tells me that this is going to be developing. So I know that this one's still developing, so we're going to have to add that in. Let's look at this one. So we have current going this way again. It's going to enter the positive side. The voltage is positive. The current is positive. Therefore, uh, the power is positive. And so since that's positive, it's going to be absorbing. Therefore, uh, this one is not going to be in our, we're not going to add it because it's uh, absorbing. Let's look at this one. So this one's going to be entering the negative side. So we do use, right, because the current's going this way. So you can see that here. So it's going to be going through it like this. And so I know that it's negative. So we're going to be using negative IV. But keep in mind that this was negative 2.7. So you're going to have a negative, uh, whatever the current is, 6 times a negative 2.7. This is going to cancel. It's positive. So positive means it's absorbing. Therefore, we don't need to add it in our calculation. Uh, so yeah, so we're not going to use U, not going to use U. In this case, we just have a 6 times the voltage, which is positive 0.3. So P equals IV. We're multiplying two positive numbers. Therefore, it's just going to be positive still. So no change in that one. Still going to be absorbing. Let's look at this one. So we know the current's going to be going like this from this one. And then the current's going to be going uh, down here. So if you look at Ker uh, Kirchhoff's current law, uh, we do a note on here. So 6 plus 9 is 15. So the current is going to be traveling this way. So it's going to be entering the negative side on this one. And so the voltage across it is just uh, V sub 0. So it's 3 times the current, which is 15. Uh, but we're entering the negative side. So we're using negative IV. So P equals negative IV. But then we have two positives. So this one is negative. So the only two ones in this circuit that are actually going to be uh, developing is this one right here and this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just got to add up those two. So um, yeah. So let's just do it right here. So P1, I'm going to call it for this one, is going to be IV, right? And so keep in mind, this one is positive. Yeah, we're entering the positive side. So it's just going to be 9 times minus 17. So plug that in your calculator. 9 times minus 17 minus 153. And this is in watts. And then for this one, uh, what is the current going through it? Right, this one right here. It's going to be P2 equals, uh, we're entering the negative side, so negative IV. So negative, what's the current? Remember, uh, I was talking about Ker uh, Kirchhoff's current law. So we have 9 going this way. We have 6 going this way. And then what would be going out this way? So just intuitively, we know that these have to add up to go here because that's the only direction they can go. So 6 plus uh, 9 is 15. So it's going to be 15 amps of current. Uh, and then so we can go ahead and plug that in. So uh let me get that right here 15 and then multiply that by the voltage which was v0 so 3 so 15 times 3 is going to be 45 so it's negative though keep that in mind watts so if we add these up and so keep in mind it's, the reason it's negative is because we're um developing so when you write this in your when you plug this in it's just going to be a positive value so 153 plus 45 is 198 so 198 watts, this is going to go ahead and be your answer. So this is going to be how much is developed in this circuit. So essentially, all we had to do was solve for each thing uh, in order to get determine which ones are going to be developing, which ones are going to be uh, absorbing. But yeah, so we recognize which ones were developing, and then we just added it up. So 198 watts, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully, you found this useful.